Why is it so hard to follow a healthy diet? As an eating behavior scientist, this is a question I have been studying for almost the past decade. Yet, it still continues to puzzle me. Picture this. When a large group of people are asked to rate their intentions to consume a healthy diet, on average, people report a reasonable positive commitment to eat healthily. However, what we see in practice is that people often struggle with following through with these intentions and actually making healthier choices. For example, with a show of hands here, who manages to eat the daily recommended amount of 250 grams of vegetables? Well, <laughs> recent statistics show that less than 10% of the Dutch population successfully do. And this struggle is also clearly reflected in the fact that almost half of all Dutch adults are classified as either overweight or obese. And unfortunately, the global picture is not any more promising. I believe that a key component to help tackle this global health challenge of unhealthy diets is a better understanding of the forces at play during moments of food choice, and specifically, a greater understanding of the forces driving us to make healthier food choices, even when we may be confronted with tempting circumstances, such as when you're hungry and confronted with all these yummy candies and chocolates at the checkout of the cashier. And in my ventures to explore the forces at play during moments of food choice, I have, in my scientific toolbox, a wide array of methods to assist me, the most exciting and emerging of which is VR technology, or virtual reality technology. Using VR, we are able to recreate the very environments in which we make food choices in the real world, such as a bustling supermarket, which is impossible to do with traditional lab-based methods. Once you put your VR goggles on, you are immediately transported into another dimension, while physically still being present in another. By immersing people in virtual food environments, VR gives us an exclusive, behind-the-scenes sneak peek into people's food decision-making processes in a highly naturalistic and non-invasive way while still maintaining complete control over the things that people encounter within those environments, such as the food products that they engage with. And this allows us to uncover hidden connections between specific factors, such as the placement of products in the supermarket and the grocery purchases that we eventually make. However, there is one major obstacle here. Recent evidence from van der Laan and colleagues show that people's basic fundamental responses to virtual foods, such as their craving for these foods, as well as their salivary responses triggered by these foods, are generally weaker compared to their responses to the same foods in real life. And this hints that VR is still an imperfect representation of what happens in the real world. I believe that this gap exists because a crucial element has been missing from our current virtual experiences, the sense of smell. Let me explain. From all of our senses, the sense of smell is probably the most underappreciated because it is often considered inferior compared to other more popular senses, such as vision, or compared to other species, such as dogs and rodents. Astonishingly, a recent survey carried out by researchers at Brown University found that one in two people would be more willing to lose their sense of smell than lose their pet while almost one in five people, so about 
would be more willing to give up their sense of smell than give up their phone. But the truth of the matter is, the sense of smell is incredibly important for many aspects of our daily lives. And this especially rings true when it comes to the decisions that we make about food. In fact, there are three ways in which the sense of smell profoundly shapes our food choices. Firstly, smell helps us to detect foods in the environment and remember where they're located. Imagine, it's a crisp Saturday morning and you're attending your local food market in town. All of a sudden, a whiff of fresh waffles hits you. And without anyone or anything having to tell you, you intuitively know which direction to follow. This is possible because smells can travel far and wide in all different directions, almost like forming an invisible odor map in space. And this is extremely useful to bring our attention to when a valuable food item, such as fresh waffles, is nearby. And when I say that we can use our sense of smell to move towards food in space, I mean that we are able to accurately track a scent trail, such as a chocolate odor, through a field when blindfolded and have all our other senses blocked off, much like dogs are able to do. Furthermore, in my own research, I found that not only are we able to detect foods using smell, but we can also correctly identify whether a food is high calorie or low calorie based on smell alone. We are able to distinguish between odors belonging to low-calorie apples and tomatoes versus odors belonging to high-calorie chocolate and chips. And given that smell and memory are so tightly linked, as well as the great importance of finding foods for our survival, I further questioned whether we are able to remember where a food was located just by using our nose. And this was indeed the case people are able to correctly recall where they previously encountered a food odor, especially that of high-calorie foods, even in a surprise memory task when they were not actively trying to memorize food locations. And this hints that this is an ability that all of our noses possess and can do without much effort. Secondly, smell ignites your appetite. Question, have you ever been in the train on the way home from work and you noticed that someone in the same booth as you was enjoying fries? Then, out of your own control, you notice your stomach starts grumbling, your mouth starts watering, and you develop a sudden intense craving for fries or a similar snack such as potato chips. Well, if you recognize the situation, don't worry, it's a completely normal and human response to the nearby smell of a food. Boosevelt and colleagues showed that the mere presence of a food odor rapidly triggers an increase in appetite, and particularly appetite for the food attached to the smell. So if you were to smell a banana odor, for instance, your appetite for banana or other foods with similar taste and calorie profiles, such as other fruits, would increase the most. And these changes in appetite are often also accompanied by bodily responses, such as an increase in saliva production, which is thought to reflect the body's preparation for the incoming food. And astonishingly, the mere presence of a food odor can subtly direct our choices towards the food item in question, even if we not, may not be fully aware of the presence of the odor itself, such that a faint banana odor can attract people to purchase more fruits at the supermarket, for instance. And finally, smell is flavor. 
When food hits your mouth, we have smell to thank for the incredible experience of flavor that follows. Everything from fruity to nutty to smoky and meaty. And this is because we actually have two ways of smelling food. Besides sniffing the air around us, smell particles are also released as we chew foods in our mouths. And it is this form of smell that allows us to savor our favorite glass of wine or favorite slice of cheese in all of its glory. It is thought that up to 80% of flavor comes from the nose. And without the sense of smell, our taste experiences would be much less intense and definitely less rewarding. You probably recognize this yourself when you have a cold or if you recently contracted COVID-19. Your morning cup of coffee just does not taste the same or like anything at all, really. So given the undeniable power of smell over our food choices, we thought, why not try to harness it and inject it into a VR environment to quite literally create a smelly technology? The formula behind our smelly technology is pretty straightforward, but its novelty lies in the fact that it involves a marriage between scientific disciplines who, up until recently, have largely developed separately from one another. The digital sciences and the sensory sciences. From the digital sciences, we will make use of an immersive, three-dimensional virtual supermarket that can house up to 1,200 realistic products, products of which are found in your typical grocery store. We can customize this virtual supermarket in many different ways, depending on the specific questions that we're interested in. So we can alter its spatial layout, for example, the product assortment available, product packaging and prices, and even add promotional signs and stickers. The only limit here is your imagination. We will combine this virtual supermarket with a unique device from the sensory sciences called an olfactometer, which acts as a vessel for generating and delivering smells. The state-of-the-art olfactometer we will use can house up to 13 smells and seamlessly administer them at precise times and locations within the virtual supermarket in response to a particular trigger that is invisibly present in the virtual environment. So when you combine these elements together in our formula, you create a technology that can accurately mimic natural smelling behavior during a grocery shopping trip. So for example, we will be able to deliver a bread odor at varying intensities when someone passes the virtual bakery section, which slowly gets triggered as one gets closer to the virtual fresh bread and slowly dies down as one walks further away. We can also mimic more exploratory sniffing behavior, such as when one stops to examine a banana. In this case, the banana odor can be released proportionally to a hardware-based trigger, such as the distance between the VR goggles and the VR hand controller. By incorporating the sense of smell, it is our personal ambition to bridge the existing gap between virtual and real-life food experiences. And in the coming months, we will not only develop this technology, but we will also validate it as a tool for research by conducting an experiment that compares people's basic responses to virtual foods within our smelly VR environment versus that of a traditional VR environment without the sense of smell to see whether our smelly technology can indeed better capture real-life circumstances. So, to circle back to the question I posed at the very beginning. Why is it so hard to follow a healthy diet, and what can we do about it? We may not have all the answers right now, 
But it is my belief this new technology can equip us to ask better questions, and in doing so, unravel new ways of empowering people to make healthier food choices, ways of which are rooted in people's real, sensory-rich experiences of making such decisions in their everyday life. Because, and believe me, your nose knows way more than it gets credit for. Thank you. <laughs>